Saturday evening the 28th of August and you are very welcome to this talk of course. Now I want to look at a study from the UK now that's got massive implications for the rest of the world and basically that is saying that people that have the Delta variant infection are more than twice as likely to be hospitalised compared to people with the previous Alpha variant. Now this has got huge implications for under vaccinated populations. So it's got big implications for the United States where it does mean basically we're going to see an increase in hospitalizations and deaths and many other countries around the world that are challenged with low levels of vaccine. And it also got potential implications for Australia and New Zealand depending on how the virus spreads there. So let's start off with some orientation here first of all. Um, so now I've put Afghanistan in there. I mean, clearly you can see Afghanistan has got zero cases. Um, of course, it hasn't. They're simply not being recorded. So on top of all the other problems in that country, we believe there's an awful lot of um, um, positive cases being detected in people that are leaving from, from Kabul at the moment and going to other countries. We believe there's a very high positivity rate in those people. So the situation in the country is probably much worse than we think and certainly much worse than this would uh, would indicate uh, New Zealand well yeah increasing cases in New Zealand Australia of course sadly Canada slow increase in Canada and um, Ireland um, well starting to level off now I would say we would hope we would hope um, but still a bit early to tell really United States going up and the United Kingdom going up now as well um Population fully vaccinated. Now, this is really quite important for what we want to say today. Now, Afghanistan, of course, basically no one. Um, in fact, we don't really know too much about that. New Zealand and Australia, well, still relatively low compared to um, Ireland, Canada and the United Kingdom. Now, although the the amount of the virus there is not great at the moment, it is increasing. And this is the Delta variant we're talking about. So if the virus does become widespread in Australia and New Zealand, when these vaccination levels are still quite low, that's now we know got huge implications for increased hospitalizations. And we also know that the hospital facilities in both of those countries is limited. So some pretty huge, potentially uh, not very nice unknowns hanging over Australia and New Zealand at the moment. Vaccination wise in the United States, well, we've got quite a big gap. So there's still about 90 million people in the United States not vaccinated, very prone to the double, more than times two risk of hospitalisation with the Delta variant. Uh, number of patients in hospital at the moment, this is already being manifest, of course, I'm afraid. So Canada, Ireland hospitalizations up also United Kingdom were drifting up but the United States quite a dramatic increase due to the combination of low levels of vaccine and the Delta variant and that is probably going to get worse and just to confirm that there, there we are this is the data we have New Zealand Australia United Kingdom United States Ireland Canada basically uh, as, as much as makes no difference all Delta variant so the United States will see it's 99% and uh, we're going to see how likely it is the infections are going to cause more severe disease in those groups that are unvaccinated. Now, just briefly before we go on to that, let's look at the um, current situation in New Zealand. So cases reported in the past 24 hours. This is up to the 28th of August. So this is up to date for New Zealand. Now, the border ones I'm not too worried about because they can catch those. Um the, the ones that we're worried about really are the community cases. So new cases reported during the past 24 hours in the community, 429. So that's the number we're worried about. That's quite a lot of community spread. Uh, the total number again, adding both of those up. So this is a concern in New Zealand. If this does become widespread, despite the lockdown in New Zealand, because of the transmissibility of the Delta variant, the uh, hospitalizations implications will be significant. Likewise in Australia. Again, we see this sort of compartmentalization of Australia that probably will really work quite well. So capital capital territory is 21. Uh, New South Wales, well over 1,035 in the last uh, 24 hours. And Victoria, a few as well. Not so bad in other states. 
Let's hope, uh, let's hope the other ones, uh, Northern Territories, let's hope they stay good. Let's hope South Australia stays good. Let's hope Tassie stays good. And let's hope WA stays good. Quite a few of the ones in WA are related to cargo ships in the ports in Perth and uh, Fremantle. Um, so Australia, travel between provinces in Australia now, states in Australia, very, very limited. Now, moving on to this study from the UK. Now, it is quite a significant study, this, from the UK. Um, very large numbers, very accurate data, consistent with a recent study from Scotland as well. So we're pretty confident about this data that I'm just about to, uh, just about to talk about now. So um, hospital admissions for emergency care and uh, hospital admissions and emergency care attendance. Risk of the Delta variant B1617 two compared to the alpha variant b117 first identified in india as opposed to the alpha variant first identified in kent in the uk now this is from the lancet and so it looks like a pretty good study i've read it and it's actually fairly a fairly impressive study this one the whole thing is there um i download the pdf and read through it all you could if you wanted to there's the there's the link, but uh, that's the paper there. Great to see that the Lancet are still making all the COVID articles um, free, which is great for me because I don't subscribe to the Lancet. Um, right, so um, Public Health England and the Medical Research Council carried out this, so pretty reputable stuff. SARS coronavirus 2 Delta variant first detected in England in March 2021, just bear that in mind. Um, suspected to cause more severe disease than the alpha variant. We've ummed and ahs about this for a while now, we know it does. Determining the relative risk of hospital attendance, whether it's an A&E department or an emergency department or hospitalisation itself. Now this is between England in March, March the 29th, when Delta variant was starting to replace the alpha variant, up to May the 23rd, where it had virtually replaced it. That was the time of rapid uh, takeover of the uh, Delta variant in the UK. So what this means is collecting data in this time. There was quite a lot of data collected in Alpha variant days and Delta variant days. And of course, they were both mixed up a bit as well. So ideal time to do the study, which of course is why they did it. Um, so they looked at everyone in the current, everyone in England, all the people that are infected with alpha or delta variant. So they had very large amounts. Now this data comes from Public Health England's second second generation surveillance system, COVID-19 associated deaths data sheet, national immunisation management systems and uh, NHS digital secondary use services and emergency care data set. So, so basically, basically they collected all the data in England of course public health England and the national health have the capacity to do that so um, it's not so much a study it's it's just taking everyone who was in the country who was infected so um, likely to be good data the number was 43,338 during that time period tested positive most of those were unvaccinated so these are so 74 percent of people that tested positive were unvaccinated that means. In other words, 26% of the people that tested positive were vaccinated, but we know that this can happen. We just know it results in less hospitalizations and death, which incidentally this study does demonstrate, although it wasn't the main purpose of this study, but it does actually demonstrate that as an incidental finding. Now, this is really quite concerning and uh, interesting, really. Median age of these people getting infected in that time period was 31 the interquartile range was 17 to 42. In other words, 50% of the people fell in that age bracket. It means 25% were younger than 17, of course, which of course is a lot. And 25% were older than 42, which isn't surprising. Um, but the median age was 31. So we are dealing with much younger people being infected now because, of course, we know this is because the majority, the vast majority of the older population is fairly well vaccine protected. Uh, Delta variant, they detected 8,682 infections. Alpha, they detected uh, 34,656 as the Delta variant started to replace. Now, obviously, near the start of the study, it was mostly Alpha variant. 
and then towards the end of the study it was becoming mostly delta variant. So there was a, a temporal relationship there, mostly alpha at the beginning, mostly delta at the end. Now people admitted to hospital or sought, emerg sought, or sought emergency care basically went to an ED or an accident emergency department. So admitted to hospital or sought emergency care within 14 days of a positive test. Now we know that this illness is phased. The first week is likely to be the viral phase. The second and third week are the inflammatory phases. So if people are going to be admitted to hospital, it's in the second and third week, mostly in the second week, but it could also be the third week after initial symptoms. But they took 14 days, which of course is quite reasonable. Now the Delta variant, there was 498 admissions or attendances and the Alpha variant, there was 1,448. Now that's so that that's related to these numbers here of course now the differences the percentage here don't look that great we can see the delta slightly better uh, and, and and the well slight no slightly worse a slightly higher number sorry and the alpha slightly better with a lower number but when they took into account the change in the frequency over time and they took into account the age sex ethnicity deprivation score recent international travel um, area of residence, calendar week, because of course this changed over time, as we said, it started mostly alpha and then went on to be mostly delta, and vaccination status. When they took all those things into account, it turned out that the hazard ratio for attendance at emergency care or hospital was 1.45. So in other words, people that um, had the delta variant were 45% more likely to attend an emergency department or be hospitalised. So that means if alpha variant is is uh, is one, delta variant is 1.45, 45% more. That's the hazard ratio. So we see 45% more people infected with delta variant attending A&E departments or being hospitalised compared to the alpha variant. But, and this is this is a big but as well, uh, the people that went on to be hospitalised with the delta variant, the hazard ratio was 2.26. In other words, 2.26 times more likely to be hospitalised if someone was infected with the Delta variant as opposed to being infected with the Alpha variant. So more than double the risk of hospitalisation. Another way to put that is 226%. But 2 times 2, 2.26 2, 2. times more likely to be hospitalised with the Delta variant in comparison to the alpha variant in people that, that, that this was in everyone so really this is a big difference but when they looked at the people but, but when they looked at the people that were uh, vaccinated uh, they found no significant difference between variants or emergency visits to hospitalizations now they said the data wasn't really quite sufficient for this but um, what that means is that basically that applies to people that are unvaccinated so what this data really is showing is that people who are unvaccinated who get the Delta variant 2.26 times more likely to be hospitalised than people who are unvaccinated who get the Alpha variant. People that um, were vaccinated, especially those who were double vaccinated, um, they were more like no more likely to be hospitalised or visit emergency departments if they were infected with the Alpha or the Delta variant. So it's the unvaccinated that are at much greater risk of getting hospitalised with the Delta variant. The patients that were vaccinated, whether infected with Alpha variant or Delta variant, didn't affect their hospitalisation rate. In, in other words, the, the vaccines were protecting against both variants equally well. So the unvaccinated, more than twice the risk. And I think you can see the huge implications of this for places like, well, think of anywhere, Philippines, Indonesia... We saw it in India with people queuing outside and dying outside hospitals. Uh, the, the implications of this are potentially quite unthinkable in, in low vaccination countries. Really quite, really quite serious implications. Interpretation, direct quotes from the authors. This large national study found a higher hospital admission or emergency care attendance risk. For patients with COVID-19 infected with the Delta variant compared to the Alpha variant, of course, and the risks of hospitalisation were higher than the risks of attending a hospital uh, emergency department. 
And then they say this result suggests that outbreaks of the Delta variant in unvaccinated populations might lead to a greater burden on healthcare services than the Alpha variant. So this is a massive thing for the unvaccinated in the United States, as we see by the cases that are testing positive and uh, as we see by the huge increase in hospitalizations in the states and of course the implications for other unvaccinated areas so there you are if you're not vaccinated 2.26 times more likely to be hospitalized now we are in the delta variant pandemic as opposed to the start of the year when we we're in the alpha variant pandemic so does the delta variant cause more severe disease in the unvaccinated yes very much so more than double in the, in the vaccinated, in the fully vaccinated, doesn't make much difference. So pretty, uh, pretty sobering figures and concerning because the pandemic now everywhere is the Delta variant. Just a few other quick comments on that. So, so um, Public Health England Protection Against Hospital Admission, 96% uh, for the Pfizer BioNTech, 92% for the Oxford vaccine. That was from that site there. That's about a month old now. Um, but but we know that this one does carry on increasing for four to five months. So after four to five months, these are probably going to be very similar. So very similar for both vaccines. So if you've had the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, be assured your protection against hospitalisation is going to be essentially the same after the Pfizer, but it will take four or five months to build up. So UK vaccination rates, uh, 47.9 million, 88% over 16s have had a first dose. 78% have had a second dose, much higher than the United States, which is still significantly at risk from the increased hospitalisation risk with the Delta variant and everywhere else in the world that is not well vaccinated. Uh, Public Health England um, doctor, we already know that vaccination offers excellent protection against Delta and as this variant accounts for over 99% of COVID cases in the UK, it is vital that those who have not received two doses of a vaccine do so as soon as possible. So that's uh, Dr. Gavin Dabrera from the Public Health England. Goes on to say um, it is still important that if you have COVID symptoms, stay at home and get a PCR test as soon as possible because you could be spreading it to the unvaccinated. So it means that while things are getting dramatically better in the UK, in Europe and Canada, um, difficult times are ahead in the States and in many other parts of the world that are not vaccinated and does mean that the risk for Australia and New Zealand is significant. Now, I'm not going to go through the Scottish data, but it, it basically it was fairly consistent with this. Lancet studies findings are consistent with the Scottish data. So basically it's the same. Delta with a, more than double the risk of hospitalisations. Now, just before we finish today, I'm just going to talk briefly about the uh, the new therapy that's really being pushed quite hard in the United States, really. It's the monoclonal antibody therapy. These are uh, lab-produced antibodies to give passive immunity. Immunity is given by given the antibodies. It's passive immunity because the individual has not made the antibodies themselves, but enjoys the immunity that those given antibodies will afford. Uh, FDA is given emergency use authorization at the moment. Florida, there's 21 pop-up sites where people basically pop in. Now, in Florida, I don't know about the other states, but in Florida, this is being given via injection shots. Uh, I believe this is like um, subcutaneous injections that it's being given in. So done very, uh, very quickly and relatively easy, relatively low tech in Florida in these 21 pop-up sites. And then I believe people only kept for an hour to observe for side effects and then they basically they're sent home again. So people that are starting to feel ill can go into these sites if they haven't been vaccinated and get the passive immunity because they haven't, if they're not vaccinated, haven't taken on the active immunity. Now, the active immunity from the vaccine is going to last. Protection against hospitalisation is probably going to last 10 months at least and probably a year or two we don't know because the time hasn't elapsed okay we, we know that the risk of reinfection goes up uh, that, that infection protection wanes with time but hospitalization protection remains good for the time that we've studied this so why these people should neglect to get active immunity and go for passive immunity is beyond me but maybe the fact that they start to feel sick 
and think, oh, just a minute, I feel sick and frightened, I might get severe COVID and die. M maybe that's what makes the spirit move. And they go into these pop-up centres, particularly important for people with um, risk factors, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, cardiovascular disease, cerebrovascular disease, immunocompromise, uh, any of those conditions that we know about. Now, it's important that if people do start to get symptoms of COVID, that they get tested quickly. And if they test positive, they get this treatment straight away. Because it only works in the viral stage of the illness, because these antibodies fight the virus. They'll reduce the viral load. If you wait till the second week, the body's already get, got rid of the virus and these antibodies will have no effect at all. No effect at all in reducing the pathological, immunological, inflammatory action, which causes things like the acute respiratory distress syndrome where the alveoli fill up with fluid so it's got to be early or it's useless and of course president trump had this within about 12 hours of diagnosis and um and he was uh absolutely fine this reminds me actually president trump said this um can you see that what camera am i on yeah that one president trump says i recommend take the vaccines i did it it's good take the vaccines so whatever your political persuasion You've got political leaders, whether it's Mr. Biden or Mr. Trump, saying take the vaccine. Um, so, uh, yeah, via injection shots. Now, the other states, I believe it's still done via intravenous infusions. Uh, Dr. Fauci said it can reduce deaths by 85 percent if it's given early enough, early in the infection. Pretty impressive, actually. Pretty impressive. Um, but of course, what it's doing is giving you antibodies artificially which the body would have made through vaccination so it's not surprising that it's got that kind of level of effectiveness i think there's two different um, antibodies in it that fight slightly different parts of the spike protein it does lower viral load it's being given out quite a lot now in texas missouri and iowa as a day case thing you just drive in and get it and patients are observed for one hour so this is one way to help keep hospitalization rates down in the states is if you are feeling ill, uh, if you do get any of the symptoms of, uh, of COVID-19, then get tested straight away. And if you get this monoclonal antibody therapy at an early stage, if you're not vaccinated, you will reduce your risk, at least for the next few weeks or maybe the next month or so, month or two, um, of, of um, you, you reduce your risk almost down as low as someone who's been vaccinated. But much more sense to get vaccinated in the first place. But of course, the, the, the antibodies that, that, that um, are stimulated by the vaccine, the immune cells will go on mating that for a long period of time. The, the antibodies that are given, they're just going to sit there and gradually degrade. And the level of protection is going to start going down basically from as soon as you're given them. So after a few weeks, your level of protection or a month or two is going to go down to the same level as someone who's never been vaccinated and never been exposed. And the antibodies will have no immunizing effect in terms of generating active immunity it's just this short-lived passive immunity it's the same immunity that baby gets from mum so when when um the, the late stages of fetal life lots of antibodies go from the mother's blood into the baby's blood and these antibodies protect the baby from infection for the first few months of life without that would all die of sepsis within the first day or two of life and we would have no human race or no animals at all so th 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 that passive immunity is is why any of us are here because I, I i would i would have died as a baby if i did not have passive immunity from my mum then of course if you get breast milk you get immune some more immunoglobulins uh, from the breast milk as well particularly immunoglobulins type a Right, uh, I think that's enough for that. Um, remember, this is quite quite significant news, really. It means the pandemic has got a lot of people still to make sick uh, in areas where vaccination is low, thanks to the Delta variant and more than doubling the chance of hospitalisation. So thank you for watching.